Explicit mappings allow us to be precise with our field definitions, taking the creative control away from Elasticsearch. We describe everything up front, providing the structure of our data and the relevant properties. I showed an example explicit mapping for the weather data index in the previous section. Here it is again, but using the weather data three index. We provided all the information Elasticsearch will need to store the current fields and allow us to query them. Elasticsearch won't need to create new fields or determine the right field type to use, and we won't have to worry about it choosing the wrong type. An explicit mapping only bypasses the type inference that Elasticsearch does for the fields we provide in the explicit mapping. If we index a document with a field not described in the explicit mapping, Elasticsearch will still add that new field to the mapping and infer a data type to use. I'll delete the current weather data three index, recreate it using the explicit mapping and index a document containing a new field called humidity. The document gets indexed fine, and the mapping now contains an entry for the humidity field, which Elasticsearch has set to a float type. Now this is the right type to be used, but if users start adding all sorts of fields we don't know about, we're gonna start hitting problems. We can end up with bad quality data in the index, which leads to our data becoming more difficult to work with. Now there are some options for how to deal with when documents contain new fields not defined in the index's explicit mapping. We can tell Elasticsearch to either reject the document completely, returning an error to the user, or we can allow the document to be indexed, but ignore fields not in the explicit mapping, essentially disabling dynamic mappings for the index. I'll run through some examples for each of these scenarios. First, we'll configure the index to reject documents containing fields not defined in our explicit mapping. And to do this, we set the dynamic parameter of the mapping to strict. If we now try indexing the document containing the humidity field, we'll get an error. This is really handy in a production environment. It prevents what's referred to as field count explosion, where the number of fields in your mapping is always increasing as clients add documents with previously unmapped fields. It can, however, be too strict. An alternative is still to allow the document to be indexed, but ignore fields not defined in the explicit mapping. To do this, we set dynamic to false. Now we don't get an error when we index the document and the field isn't in the mapping for the index. One feature worth noting here is that while the humidity field was an index, and that there are no data structures maintained to allow searching over the field, it is still in the underscore source for the document. Notice the humidity field is there. Querying it, however, won't match any documents because it's not indexed. This might not seem very useful, but it allows us to put that field to work later if we choose to incorporate it into our explicit mapping. We could create a new weather data for index with the humidity field in the explicit mapping, then re-index the documents in weather data three to weather data four, and the humidity field will be indexed there, meaning we can run queries over that field. I haven't mentioned the re-index API yet, but this is a tip worth bringing up now. We'll cover the re-index API in a lot of detail later in the course. You can always add new fields to your mapping, as you've seen with dynamic mappings. There is a limit to the number of fields a mapping can have, but it's a limit that can be changed. The default value for this is a thousand fields per index. This limit is there to prevent cluster performance issues. Resource utilization increases a lot when you have a large number of fields in an index. You can't change the data type for an existing field in a mapping. There are a lot of low level data structures for each field that are maintained as documents are added. Changing the data type for an existing field would require rebuilding all those fields. If you need to change the data type for an existing field, the general pattern is to create a new index with your new mapping and bring documents over in what's called a re-index operation. We'll look at that process later in the course.
You can, however, change the dynamic parameter for an existing index mapping. You put the new setting to the underscore mapping resource of the index, like this.